Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for attending our webinar today. Today is April 11th, 2017, and this is Pandoc 102 Catalog and Pricing Tables webinar. My name is James, and I'm the technical manager here at Pandoc, and in this webinar, we'll discuss the following. Uh, the catalog overview, how we can add new catalog items and discussion of the catalog fields, our import and export functions of the catalog. Once we go into that, we're going to discuss a template and a pricing table block of adding a pricing table to templates and documents, adding catalog items to our pricing tables, setup of the pricing tables using taxes and discounts, using uh, optional items and quantity editable and much more, using more design theme to change the colors of our pricing tables, adding our pricing tables to the content library to be used again and again, and also we'll be sending out a document so you have an understanding from the recipient's point of view of our pricing tables and how that works for uh, the individual options that we have. And of course, we'll have a QA session at the end. And as always, everybody, if you do have questions along the way, you're also also to willing to uh, reach out to me through the questions and answer box using GoToMedia. We can go through that together. So find on our website underneath the products in the feature sections, we do have a section here called uh, uh, Configure Price Quote, and that's what the, the Panadoc catalog and pricing table is all about, Configure Price Quote. Uh, Panadoc includes a robust CPQ functionality, create reusable catalog items and dynamic pricing tables inside of your documents. With the auto-calculate feature, you can handle uh, discounts, taxes, and cost and profit margins with little effort. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm sure most of you have uh, used Pandoc before. So over here on the left-hand side is part of our UI. We're inside of our catalog here. And basically what the catalog, of course, is how you could, this is really the first step of kind of get you started of, of the items that you want to uh, potentially add to your pricing tables for the documents. Now, you could use this everything from proposals to quotes to invoices to even presentations and all those types of things that you want. And we'll go on through and we'll talk about that. So first, over here on the left-hand side, as part of the catalog, you do have multiple folder options to create out if you have multiple, many different types of items inside of your account. And so this main view here, we can start out by SKU and name. Um, over here on the right-hand side, we do have a selectable options for each of the catalog items. So we can move them to a specific folder, or we can even delete them right from the catalog if we wanted to. We also have the ability to check multiple items like you see here. And from here, we can also move, we can also delete them as well. So next, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck these real quick. And over here on the top right-hand side, this is how we can create a brand new item. We do have an import functionality as well. There's a lot of us uh, that has an existing catalog items through a CSV, um, and we do have the ability to import them directly into the Pandoc system. Uh, what I do recommend is you check out this documentation that we have here. And the biggest thing you really need to remember is that our predefined columns is that our SKU is our unique identifier. So you need to have an individual SKU number for each catalog item inside of your CSV and the different variations of the columns that we have. And of course, we also have a whole bunch of great information about that. So uh, please take a look at that, go through that process instead of, you know, manually added them manually, but it's certainly up to you with that, okay? So back into the uh, catalog here, also we have the ability to export out our items as well. And what this is a really great because once you create your items in your catalog, you can use the export file, dump them out to a CSV, and then of course at any time you have that information available at your fingertips and it really makes it easy to just update your export to CSV and then re-import back into your catalog items to update all the information, including prices, you know, description information, and that type of stuff as well. So let's go ahead and click on an item here. So I'm going to show you here an item called Website Setup. And this is all the fields that are associated with the catalog items inside of Panadoc. We have a SKU field, once again, is, is your, our unique identifier. We have an item name here, and we have a, a price with all different variations of our currency set here, and of course an amount for that individual currency. As part of our business and enterprise plans, we do have the ability for a cost and profit margin option as well that you can enable, and you can add this cost field, and of course, it add the cost and profit margin inside your pricing tables, and I'm going to show you how to do that today as well. We have a, a, a description, so a full detail editor here with all this, it use bolds and italics and underlines and different colors. You can even hyperlink out for things that you wanted to, and all this information here would show inside of the description field when you add that item to your pricing tables as well. 
Below that, we also have the ability to add pictures or high definition pictures that will show up on the web version of the pricing table. It won't show up on the PDF version, but that's something that we're working on. But as of right now, it will show up on the web version. It's also clickable for a high definition or a large view of that image. And this is something I recommend to all the users that I speak with is that you know adding pictures to your catalog items adds professionalization to your documents, right? Um, it's a great way to, pre uh, to show up. This services in the products you're trying to sell or the services that you've done in the past for other clients or lots of different things you can do with that. Below that we also have custom fields you notice I have created a custom field here called time of completion with some value of four to five days and this, this is of course a custom field you can keep on adding all the different kinds of custom fields that you want and I'm going to also show you how to add custom fields as secondary columns to your pricing table if you want to provide or show that extra information to them. Okay, so like I said, this is just the first part of the catalog, and next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk, go into a template, and we'll talk about setting up a pricing table at the template level to be used again and again for future documents. So over here on the left-hand side, I'm going to templates this time, and I'm going to open up this template that I'd be using here called a productivity sample with per pricing table. And as you see here, here is a template that I have created today. It has this excellent background image, and it's really stylized, and it's really beautiful, and really professional looking. And I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to go into my pricing table section. So here's my pricing table. And here is a, you know, how you can add the item to itself. So what I'm going to do real quickly here, everybody, is I'm going to remove this row. So I'm going to start off with a brink pricing table. Okay, and go ahead and remove this column as well. So I'm gonna click on add row here. And so once we've built our catalog items that we just talked about, we can go into the item name field and type in the first few letters of that individual uh, item, click on it and boom, it populates with the name, description, any images that you're having and of course pricing information as well. Down here, we also have the ability to add rows of course. So if you want to add additional rows, for example, if I want to add my YouTube uh, one here, I can certainly do things like that. We also have the ability to add out additional sections of information, right? So if you want to split this information out, have different naming conventions like services, subscriptions, those types of things, it's all configurable um, as part of that individual uh, section with that, okay? And then we also have the ability here called Add from Catalog. And what this does, this is basically a great searchable in, uh, view for all the catalog items that you have inside of your account. And what this does, this will allow you to choose multiple items to the table at one time. For example, if we want to add our uh, Google Page Plus, I can go into the item here, I can modify this, I can change my price if I want to, I can even change the quantity, and I can modify it in my description right here. And all I would have to do then is click on Add Item. And if I wanted to, of course, I can click on Add Another Item and then continue to build out that process, right? To build in you know, like a price list, for example, and then, of course, all we need to do is click on Add to Table, you know, drop all that information in there at one time, okay? Now, over here on the right-hand side, we're going to go and talk about now all these pricing table options and how different ways we can configure our pricing tables for our individual needs, right? Because we're all different. You know, it depends on the things that you're trying to sell. Some people are trying to sell services. Other people are trying to sell products, right? So it's very customizable for your individual needs. So first, of course, is we have our currency. So we can set our individual pricing tables to a specific currency here if we wanted to. We also have decimal places options for a number of decimals. Right now, we have the ability for zero. Here's a zero option. And, of course, we can do a one option. And, of course, we could do a two option as well. Below that, we have options for uh, taxes, and with this, we have a line item tax or a total tax, which is available. For a total tax, you notice that this is set to 6.5% and shows up right down here at the bottom of my table, but we also have a brand new piece of functionality that we can also choose a flat rate of a tax as well, and you notice how popular it right there was $6.50. But for me personally, I always use percentages, but it's certainly up to you of how you want to do that. So that's a total tax option, or you could changes to a line item tax option as well. And what this does, this of course adds this new column right here. And the reasons why you maybe want to set this up because there might be some items that you need to tax and the others that you don't. So that is definitely configurable for you if in those types of fashions like that. But for our purposes here, I'm going to change this to a total tax. Okay. Uh, below that, of course, we do have the ability to add additional taxes as well for our uh, Canadian friends who need to add our state and federal, federal county, those types of things. And those will exactly have all the same options that we just talked about right here. 
We keep on going down. The opposite of taxes, of course, is discounts. And with this, again, we could do a total discount by a percentage. You notice this will show up as my total discount right down here. Or if I wanted to, I could change this to a flat rate of $25. Once again, I always use uh, percentages. But we also have the ability to do changes to a line item discount as well, right? So we do have the ability to, once again, just like taxes, set individual discounts for items if we want to do things like that, OK? All right, and for our purposes here, I'm going to change this to a total tax. We keep on going down the bottom here. Excuse me here, everybody. My apologies. We had, next is we have the header option. So you see where it says name, price, quantity, subtotal. Right? There might be some times or situations right, where you don't want to share that information with, with your clients. So you can turn that on or off all in real time. You see that? Just like that. Okay. Below that, we have our borders. We have our vertical and horizontal borders that are associated with this individual table. We can go ahead and turn them on or off. So I can turn them off right here and go ahead and flip on everything. We don't want to show any lines in our table as well. Right? So those options are configurable for you. Next, of course, we have the totals options. In the totals options, we have show subtotal, which is this uh, subtotal right here. We have show section subtotal, so if you're doing multiple sections like we talked about, you can split out and show your individual subsections if you want to do things like that. We have show grand total, which is well right down here at the bottom, so you can modify and change this up if you need to do that. We have total quantity as well, so we have two items here, each have one, so if we want to do a, show, a full quantity of our items, we can do things like that as well. We have show line item tax total, meaning if we're using line item taxes that we talked about, we can go ahead and flip on this switch and that will show those line item taxes at the bottom and of course the line item discounts as well. We have our show profit cost margin, that's that cost field that I was telling you about, part of our business and enterprise plans that we can go ahead and flip on. And this will show right down here at the bottom our costs and our profits associated with that as well. So all configurable, all optionable right there as well for you, okay? Now what's great about this is that this information is not shown to your recipients by any means. However, it's more you as the author if you want to include your cost and profit margin. Below that, we have automatically add products to this table. This has to do with our integrations, Salesforce, Pipedrive, Zoho, and many others that we have. And then if you're using the integration and get it connected, you can also use pricing tables and turn them on to accept items from that individual CRM. So let's say, for example, you're using Salesforce, you create an opportunity, and the opportunity has you know, five or six items. Well, if you flip that on and use in a pricing table, it's going to accept those items from the CRM as part of the integration and pull it down right inside the individual pricing table. So if you are using one of those CRMs that we support, definitely check out our FAQ documentation. Lots of great ways in order to help you save time by automatically importing products right into the side of the Pandoc pricing tables. We also have tokens as well, so I'm going to show you what tokens are all about. But basically, because we're creating this pricing table, we could use these tokens like this one, for example, and we can use it in different locations of part of, a part of our template, for example, right? So for example, we have a pricing table here, but down at the bottom, we have the accepted price where it's going to populate with that total. And then we have a, um, a Pandoc signature or it's me initial field for our client to complete or finalize so they understand exactly what they're paying for. So I cannot express enough of using tokens as well, and especially if you're going to be separating out your pricing tables from where they're going to be signing those types of things. It's always a great way to include that information in different locations so your, your recipients of your documents completely understand how that process works as well. Okay, so like I said, that's pretty much all the standard options we have for the individual tables. So please be sure to take a look at those. They can certainly help you out to get it configured. What's also great, everybody, is we also have the ability to modify all these naming conventions. So if you don't like the word name, we could change that to an item, for example or price, or maybe like this is what you'll pay, or quantity, for example. But also down here at the bottom, you can modify all these labels as well. From subtotal, and by default, this would just show discount. Well, I included that to show employee discount because I want to be specific for the, the types of discounts that we have. For example, tax as well. By default, you put this in here, it'll be a tax, right? I want to change this to a state tax so my recipients understand what type of taxes you're paying. And then finally here down at the bottom, this is usually going to say the word total. However, I've seen many, many different variations of that, maybe grand total, but this is one of my favorites is this is what you will pay, right? So it's very customizable, configurable of how you want to define out your individual pricing tables, once again, because we're all different what we're trying to sell.
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on an individual row here uh, called the web, uh, YouTube channel setup. And you notice that in this row it's kind of gone green. Well, what happens is over here on the right-hand side, we do have some additional things that we can set per a row level. The first one here is something called is the optional item. And if I go ahead and flip this on, what this does, this will add this checkbox. You see that right there? And our subtotals filled out is included within that. Well, if I uncheck that box, you notice that by subtotals, my information changes because this is not included within this pricing table calculation. So this is also known as a la carte pricing or, or um, giving options for your recipients to choose if they want to include this as part of the pricing table. So, right, so if you want to give them options or you want to give them additional add-ons for them to choose from to include within your proposal or your invoice, right, it's all available with that. So I'll go ahead and we'll leave that off because I'm going to show you from a recipient's point of view what that looks like, okay? We also have the quantity edible option right here, so I'm going to flip this on, and what this does, this will allow our recipients to modify the quantity of our individual row items. So once again, there might be situations or times where you want to have your recipients define how much of that individual item that they want. I use it all the time, for example, for my pricing, my website setups, my YouTube channels, those types of things as well. Okay. So the other thing is that we got with this is we also have the ability to add columns. So remember that custom field that we talked about today, it's called time of completion. Well, I can do it and click on that, and in turn, is I'm actually going to drop that in there to populate that information. So our website one did fill out, however, our YouTube channel did not fill out, so I can go in here and put in two to three days, right? So this is also configurable for your custom fields like we talked about as part of your catalog. But once again, it's part of add column and where you can, where you can do your SKU and, of course, your custom fields as well. Okay. So that's pretty much all the standard options we have for the individual tables, you know, for our pricing tables that we have. You know, it's very customizable. It's very, you know, configurable for your individual needs. Lots of different options with that. So please be sure, take a look about that. If you do have any questions, please let us know. Now, one of the questions you might say, hey, how did I get this, the, my header here to a black color? Well, and the reasons why I did that, because I want to match it up with my background, right? Kind of matches all up together to give a professional looking document. And we can do that by going into more. And then we have these options right here called design. Inside of design, we are really have two things. We have things called themes that you could use a Pandoc theme, one of these that our team has created in the past. Or you can create your own individual styles for your heading fonts, for your text fonts, for your colors, your background images, like you see here with all my black stones here. But what we're concerned about here this time is this theme color option. And this is what defines this color. So, for example, if I want to go and choose this student who are red, for example, see that right on the fly, all in real time. It automatically updates depending on my individual color theme. And this is something I do recommend, especially if your company has a color theme, you want to brand, right, your templates and your, your, your Pandoc documents to that. It's all about providing a good, you know, professionalization, professional, good-looking document with all the content that you have as well, okay? So that's, like I said, uh, that's how we define the color. So the next thing I want to talk with you about is part of our business and enterprise plans that we have here at Pandoc, we also have this option called the library or the content library. And what this does, this will allow us to save bits and pieces of our content to be used again and again. Now this is really vitally important, especially for the catalog and for the pricing tables, because now we have the ability to create our own individual pricing tables like you see this one, and let's say, hey, I want to plan on using this again and again and again, right? Well, what you can do is inside of the pricing table options over here in the top right-hand side, we do have this option selected called Add to Content Library. And when I do that, we have two options or to build out a brand new library item or we can build on existing library items as well, right, to build on previous ones that we have. So I'm going to build a brand new one here and today I'm going to call this April 11th pricing block so we all know what this one is and I'm going to click on add. And what this is going to do is this is going to tell us that the content library item has been saved to the library so we could use it again and again. So let's say we're in a future template, we're in a future document, for example, and we want to pull that in. All that we need to do is go over here on the right-hand side, we go into a library, we have all my different two options here called blocks and images. 
blocks, of course, is all the individual blocks of content, including our text box, our videos, and of course, our pricing tables. Here's our pricing table, the one I just created. I can put my mouse cursor to even give me a little preview of what that looks like, right? And I can simply drag it and drop it in in any location, just like any other block of content. So that is something I, you know, I really, really suggest, you know, especially, you know, as you start building your Pandoc team out and the number of users that you have, is to use the content library, right? Because you don't necessarily want them to create content. You want them to pick and choose the content that's best going to benefit their needs or the different types of tables or pricing variations and videos and all different types of things with that, okay? So like I said, I just want to give you that example with that. So what I'm going to do now, everybody, is that because we've defined out our table, what this is going to look like and everything, I'm going to go ahead and create our first document from this template. And we're going to review the template, or review the document, excuse me, and then send this out to a demo recipient so you all have an understanding of what it looks like from our recipient's point of view. And if you do have any additional questions, uh, please let me know. This, uh, we can certainly go through them right now as well. So let's go ahead and click on Create Doc. So the very first thing it's going to ask me to is, is uh, assign people to roles. So as part of my template here, I created a role called client, and all I have to do now is assign an individual recipient to this individual role. And what I'm going to do here is I have this uh, sub-account that I have here. I'm going to associate with this role. I do have the ability to add additional people or even add myself as a recipient if I want to do that to be CC'd. And then all I have to do now is click on Start Editing. And what's going to do now is going to go into the document level now. So over here in the upper left-hand side, we're now at a draft document. Here's all my cover page that I created today. Here's all my great content, of course, and all that type of stuff that we've built out. We keep on going down, and we go into our pricing table. And we, here's our pricing table. We know it's magically set up correctly. We have our optional items and, of course, our quantity edible. Uh, we have a pr price right now of $319.50. You notice that token will populate with that same information, right? But what's also great is that if they choose this option, this will all automatically update on the fly as well. Then, of course, we have our initial field that uh, for our recipient to confirm that this is what they're planning on paying because of the pricing table. And, of course, an option for a signature and a date to complete the document as well. So what I'm going to do now, everybody, is go ahead and get this document sent out. Okay, so over here on the right-hand side, let's click on Send. So we have a document name, and I'm going to put this in um, for James, and April 11th. So we all know what this one is, and I'm going to click on Save and Continue. We get a Send Document message screen that pops up here. We can change the subject line here if we wanted to, of course. We can go into our optional message, and we can click on Save Message as well if you want to use an example message that I've created in the past. All that's also configurable inside of your account. We're all ready to rock and roll. Now we click Send. Give it a couple of seconds here. We get a, doc, a message notification that document has been sent. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open and show you an email and what it looks like coming out of the Pandoc system. So here's the email. I'm using Google Gmail for access to my email. Here, of course, is the name of the document information inside the main view itself. We have our Pandoc logo and the uh, footer here down at the bottom. But we says, hello, per our discussion, please open and complete the document questions. Let me know. Let's do it. So let's go ahead and open up the document now. And what's great about Pandoc, everybody, is that, of course, can be opened up through any standard web browser, uh, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer, and so forth. Here's our recipient's point of view now, the document that we just created today. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and start reviewing all this information of the document that we sent out to them. Keep on going down here to our individual pricing tables, and here we go. So here's our pricing table that we've built so far. So first of all is the images I was telling you about before, right? So if I go ahead and click on this image right here, see what happens? A large version pops up inside of a light box. Now if you have multiple images together, you will have a slider tap, uh, a slider format, so you can move it from one picture to the next picture to the next picture and so forth. So I, like I said, I cannot um, you know, stress enough that you know, by adding pictures to your pricing tables, it is, is going to provide a great deal of professional personalization to you. And then, of course, we have this YouTube channel setup that we built here, and it's not checked now, so it's not even being calculated, but let's say, hey, I want this option. This sounds like a good deal. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. So when we do that, you notice that our pricing table, our, our subtotal updates, and of course, our subtotal or discounts and state taxes and all that information update as well. 
but also we have that quantity, quantity edible item that we talked about, right? So let's say, hey, I realize I'm going to need three YouTube channels, one for my personal life, one for my business, and maybe one for, for a certain type of products that I'm trying to sell, right? So I'm going to switch that to three. What's going to happen once again is that it updates it automatically for our subtotal. So now we have two items, one at $400 and, and another one at $150. This gives us a subtotal of $550. We got an awesome employee discount of $137.50. We got to pay that state tax though of $26.81. So this is what you will pay of $439.31. Because we're using that token, watch what happened. Automatically updated in real time. So once again, I cannot stress enough that if you're using pricing tables, use tokens as well to populate that information. So what I'm going to need to do now is I'm going to need to go ahead and complete this document. So we'll go through our black bar here, which is goes through our individual uh, fields that we need to complete. So first, of course, is our uh, initials field. So I'm going to go and choose this guy. And then I'm going to go into my signature field. So here's the signature options that we have. I'm going to go and choose this one and click on accept and sign. And then, of course, we have one more field, which is our date field, which I'm click next here. Go ahead and populate with the end of the month. Click on next. And now, because we completed all the fields, we get click done to complete the document. And when we do this, of course, uh, uh, us as the author of the document, receiving the email notification, say, hey, you know, your recipients completed the document. Um, our dummy recipient here, they would receive this message stating, congratulations, you successfully, successfully completed this document, signed the download. Uh, PDF version now. Let's do it. So let's go ahead and open up this real quickly and show you what the PDF version looks like and uh, give an example of our pricing table. So here is the PDF version now as we created. It has our great cover page and all the great content and information that we have here. We keep on going down to our pricing. Here's our pricing table that we just talked about, of course. Uh, it does include those pictures that I, met, uh, I told you about before. However, the web version does. It has all the exact same information, of course, and we completed and successfully completed and finished off the document itself, right? So, like I said, you know, with our pricing table and our catalog options, it's very, very customizable, right, for how you want to, you know, define out your individual items and, of course, you know, define it for your taxes, your discounts, and all that type of stuff, but also the design and that look and feel by using the different colors. Of course, we have images as well we can click on or they can click on to view them. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, all in, of course, ability uh, as well to save that, you know, piece of block to be used again and again as part of a content item. So I'm going to go ahead and open up to now to some live Q&A. So I'm going to wait here a couple additional minutes. So if you do have any additional questions, please, now is the time. Um, a couple different options that we talked about today is also found in the add-on store. So if you never checked this out before, please do. This is found down the lower left-hand side down to the add-on store. And this is going to take you all to the great features that we have here, including our configure uh, price quote. This is basically the entire catalog and pricing table. So if you never want to use this, you can simply turn it off in your account if you don't want to use it. That cost and profit margin I was telling about before, you can certainly go in here and get this enabled very quickly and so get this added to your pricing tables if you want to use that. Uh, another great option, of course, with our uh, payments or CPQs, our payment option as well. Uh, we currently use an integration called Stripe.com to accept payments and all works uh, in conjunction with our pricing tables, uh, meaning uh, once the document has been completed by the, by the recipient, the next thing that will pop up is a payment form, right, based upon your pricing table values. So if you're looking for a way, right, for it to be paid right away so you get start to work so you don't have to go through additional methods or forms and all that type of stuff, check out the payment option. Uh, right now, we only support uh, credit cards. However, within the next uh, you know two or three months or so, uh, we will be planning on adding ACH payments and all different types of uh, content uh, or payment options as well. Okay. All right. So I'm not seeing other questions coming in today. You know, uh, as we go forward here, if you do have any additional questions or concerns about your account, you're always welcome to reach out to us. Um, by contacting us either through the green help down here or very soon we'll have this new icon on the top right hand side where you can submit a help request. Uh, be sure to check out our FAQs as well. There's a lot of great content and information about there, about the catalog, about the pricing table, every single feature that we just talked about today. They'll walk you through step by step and guides as well. 
All right, so I'm not seeing any other questions coming in today. I hope you all uh, in, uh, found this educational and useful for your Pandoc account. And as always, if you have any additional questions, concerns, please reach out to us and we'll do our very best to take care of each and every one of you. We thank you so much for attending. You all have a fantastic day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.